All right, I'm Dave Ratt, and this is the third video I'm doing in a series on audio transformers. I've got a speaker set up here underneath some um, insulation running into a microphone. I'm plugging in various mics. The next one we'll do is a Neumann U89, and I'm, I've got that going into a Y connector one side into the channel, channel one of the console, and the other one I've got here that I can plug various transformers into, and we can look at the impact of the transformers on SMART, and then also hear them uh, in the recording of the Tascam recorder over here. Um, now, the question of whether transformers sound bad is a complex one. I've avoided them my entire audio career, except when absolutely necessary to use them for isolation. My take was that they sounded bad, and I don't think that's correct. They actually sound good. I mean, the tests that I'm doing on the transformers themselves show that they're extremely flat, very wide frequency response, and accurate and even when nulled against the original signal before and after transformer, they are almost identical and uh, very difficult to hear any differences. This is amazing to me because a transformer takes an electrical signal, converts it to a magnetic field, and then converts that magnetic field back to an electrical signal. So this conversion from electricity to magnetism to electricity is just, and the fact that that can maintain a frequency response that can null against itself throughout the audio band is quite amazing for these higher quality transformers and even the low and, lower and mid qualities. Um, the issue or the hidden aspect to this is what the transformers are doing to the actual mics themselves. Putting the transformer in line, attaching a microphone to drive the electronic input of a console like this X32 does not really load down the mic. The mic is able to move freely. When you put the added load, that coil of wire on the of the transformer onto the mic, it is like putting a brake on it. It's like putting some resistance across it. And the diaphragm is not able to move as freely or it sets up some sort of resonant circuit that may resonate in the low end or cause other tonal discrepancies. And that, is much more significant than the sound of the transformers themselves. So transformers don't sound bad, but what they do to the circuit is somewhat unpredictable, depending on which mic you're using. Um, super interesting stuff. And maybe a gremlin that's in your system that um, can save you some grief or a way to improve the sound of a system. Now, I don't know whether the mic sounds better with or without the transformer. Perhaps the microphone is designed in such a way, or some mics are designed in such a way, such that when they're driving that load of a transformer, it brings them to flat and makes them correct. And when they're not driving a transformer and they're just driving the input of a modern console, it's not loading it enough and it's more resonant or the frequency response is not correct. Conversely, it could be the opposite. A microphone could be designed to drive electronic inputs or somewhere in between. That I'm sure has a bunch of different answers, but the one thing that remains, adding a transformer to your splitter system will alter the sound to some degree. All right, let's go ahead and check out a Neumann U89. So I'll turn Phantom Power on and we will turn on pink. Let's go ahead and, oh, that's with the JS3. I didn't unplug it. Now let's see what happens if we unplug the JS3. And that green trace.
And this is probably an expected and reasonable uh, outcome. We're seeing about, I'm guessing, about a 1 dB drop all the way across the bandwidth, and it's pretty linear. It's pretty, it just basically turns it down a little bit, some attenuation, no weird lobes or peaks. Or, um, um, right there, I'm seeing 66 dB, and then plug it, and it goes to... 67. Yeah, 67 dB. So we're just seeing a one drop, one dB drop broadband with the load of the transformer with the Neumann light. It looks like it likes the transformer. It's not doing any weird response things uh, like the dynamic mics did and some of the other mics I tested. There we're seeing some low frequency roll off at the bottom end, um, but we're not really seeing the drop like we saw. So it's not attenuating it, but it's um, we do see a little low frequency roll off. I'm sure this has something to do with the output impedance of the various mic preamps. Let's go ahead and try this one. This one we're seeing some low frequency boost, but not a lot of attenuation. Now keep in mind, the ISO 2 and the twin ISO are just transformers, and the JS3 is a split with a 1 in 3 out. We can look at a 1 in 2 out here with the crimson. Here we're seeing the high frequency is staying a, uh, less than a dB difference, it appears, and the low frequency is rolling off, so it's kind of tilting it a little brighter um, than and not staying flat. All right, let's do it one more microphone. Um, the condenser mics have, um, with the mic with their mic preamps in there. Has ten, tend to have a low frequency boost or not much effect at all. The dynamic mics seem to be more impacted, which makes sense because a dynamic mic is a coil of wire. We're putting a coil of the transformer in parallel with the coil of wire of the mic, and we're going to create. Um, and then there's resistance of the cables, and um, this could change too with longer cables and the resistance of snake lines and stuff. All right, so there's the OM7. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, crank up the amp to get the level on the smart. Even. I want to it. Oh, it's nice and flat looking. Not that that matters for this. And this is with no transformer. All right. So here would have been one of the main vocal mics we use for Chili Peppers and uh, Pearl Jam and many bands that I work with. Now a recording truck shows up and puts an isolation split. There's what happens to our front of house and monitor signal. We see a huge drop across the broadband. That's a 4 or 5 dB differential plugging in a three-way split. And we load that down. 
different. What happens if the recording truck just has a straight ISO, not a split ISO? Here we've lost low end, but the highs seem almost the same. So we've got a 3 dB or so to a 3 dB difference in the lows, and almost no difference at all in the highs. Change the tilt of our tone, and you should be able to hear. Oh, let's go ahead and let's hear that. I haven't got my headphones on, so this is good. Let's go ahead and they've got whirlwind ISOs. DB to 62 and a half DB. That's like 8 DB drop. That's like a high pass filter. Or maybe the truck shows up and they've got this, oh, that was a twin ISO before. Here's the JS3. Amazing. So let's go ahead and try the Cinemag. That's um, pretty darn good. Love that little guy. Um, the least amount of damage to the signal of the ones we're doing. And then here's a little Rapco mic ISO unit transformer. Let's go ahead and try that just for the heck of it. All right, that was with an Audix OM7 mic. Um, vast differences the impact of these various transformers have on the output of the microphone. And 
There's other aspects as well, because these transformers, some of these are mic level, some are line level. They handle different amounts of energy. This Repco actually is the least expensive and had a very little impact, but it also is a mic level. I don't know what its maximum uh, for, uh, range, dynamic range is. Can it handle, um, you know, very high level mics or the output of, let's say, the Royer, which is extremely high output? I don't know. We don't want to... Um, we're just looking at the way that transformers impact our splitter or signal chain when they're added in. It seems like what is on the input to the transformer is also the same or very close to what's on the output of the transformer. The issue is that the transformer is changing what's on the input of itself as soon as you add it in. It's creating a difference. Uh, I didn't test with... Um, uh, outputs of console. So maybe uh, I will do another video. Maybe I'll do some tests and if there's anything interesting, I'll do a th fourth video in the series. And um, But driving with, let's say, a very low impedance console out, theoretically, the transformer shouldn't change that circuit too much. And what is on the front end of it will show up on the back end of it. And it should be transparent. And all those specs that we see from the transformer manufacturers that show how flat and perfect they are will come into play because they won't be messing with those microphone preamps and the dynamic microphone coil and the way it picks up music and voices. Okay, cool. I hope you found this interesting. Um, this gremlin hunt into transformers, something that um, it's been a long time coming and glad I finally got around to it and I hope you enjoyed it. Cool.